Hi, thank you for clicking on the video and I hope everyone is doing really well. So today I am going to be uh, watching and reacting to a, another video from this channel. If you're new here, the reason why I don't say it is because its existence makes me cringe so hard and saying it would just... I just have too much pride to say it. The video that I am going to be watching today is entitled, Just Because You Can Eat It Doesn't Mean You Should. And the thumbnail says, Diet Culture Lies. Whenever I read the title of this individual's videos, I never really know what direction they are going to go in. I never really know what they're gonna say. Some people that I react to, it's much easier to predict like what they're gonna say because they tend to say, the same things over and over again. I feel like I know what they believe, but then they say things that are just like, whoa, didn't see that coming. What prompted you to think it was okay to say that? And what? Also, this individual tends to not say much of anything. They usually just insult whatever it is they're talking about rather than actually critique or give substance. I can't say that I give substance either, I try to match the energy of whoever it is I'm responding to, so if you give fluff, I can give fluff right back. But hopefully deter people from believing this individual at the same time, which is why I make my reaction videos to the people that I do, because I think they might have something important to say and they might know some things, but they are reaching people on a level that is detrimental to that person watching. Okay, here we go. Diet culture says... Things diet culture says are bad for you that are not, starting with bagels. So bagels are bread. They're processed. Super ultra processed. Okay, here we go. Diet culture says... Things diet culture says are bad for you that are not, starting with bagels. So bagels are bread. bread. Processed. Super ultra processed. So just because something is processed does not mean that it's unhealthy. Frozen vegetables are also processed. They go through the process of being harvested, washed, and then processed into packaging, frozen, and shipped out. You know, most foods are processed. So I know what they mean when they say processed foods. Foods that are either, you know, they go through heavily processed, it's so hard to say, explain processed food without saying they were processed like 5,000 times. But yes, it goes through a system of, you know, they strip a lot of nutrients, they enrich nutrients back into it. There's bleaching involved, there's chem chemicals and things involved. I get it. Yes. Okay. It's processed. It's not the, it's not the healthiest food on the planet, but that doesn't mean it's unhealthy. A food simply on its own is nothing other than just a food item. Test. Um, yeah, they are bread. Okay. So he just said it's bread. So bread is unhealthy. Yeah, if all you're eating is bread, at that stage, the bread itself is not unhealthy. You just have an unhealthy habit around that bread if all you're doing is eating bread. It's carbs. Carbs is energy. I'm not sure why energy would be bad for you. Processed food. <laughs> That's right. So this is the kind of girl who would just eat anything as long as it fits my macros. I'll eat dog shit as long as it fits my macros. So carbs are energy. I don't know why energy would be bad for you. You are not intelligent. Semantics aside, listen to what she's saying and like pick up on what she's saying. Use your brain. It's like this dude knows what the what she's saying. He knows, but he can't admit that he knows and also knows that yes, she is right. Maybe she phrases it badly, maybe she doesn't give, you know, enough information to back up what she's saying, but what she's saying is right. You also look like a vegan. That's not a compliment. So all foods are processed. It makes food safe to eat. It also... No, that's not what we mean by processed foods. What we mean is nutrient devoid food. Not all processed foods in the definition that he is saying are devoid of nutrients. If nutritious or healthy is a scale, sure. The highly processed, the foods that are considered junk food, yes, would be on the lower end of the nutrient you know, nutrient dense scale, let's say over here, you know, this is like the nutrient devoid. And just because it is lower in nutrients does not make it inherently unhealthy. Nutrient devoid food using ingredients that 
are not found in nature like high fructose corn syrup. You know, it's moments like these where I'm like, I used to watch this guy. He used to make good points, or at least I believed he made good points at one time. Was he always like this or what happened? Did he change? Have I changed? Have I just, you know, educated myself properly, you know, not with biased information? Have I allowed myself to absorb all sides of the topic and not just listen to and read information that verifies my pre-existing stance like he does. I like, I don't know who's changed here. Who's changed here for the better? This reminds me of people who are like, if you can't read one of the ingredients, like if you can't pronounce it, it's not supposed to exist in your body or like it's not okay for your body to ingest that. And okay, and I think it was Abby Sharp and she was making a point about this and she like read one of the ingredients, which was like a long, very hard to pronounce ingredient. And it was just the chemical name for like iron or something. I can't remember what it was, but it's like just because you can't pronounce it doesn't mean it's not supposed to be in your body. Like a lot of the ingredients that are hard to pronounce are just, it's just the official name for like a vitamin or a mineral or a nutrient, literally something your body needs. And but you can't read it, shouldn't be in your body. And it's like, oh, that's how you have vitamin deficiencies because people don't understand vitamins and that they have different names. It's not always gonna say vitamin D. For example. Oh my God, the stupid hurts so much. Sir, listening to you sometimes is painful, but I do it because people need to know that you're just saying things say things that make no sense. Processed foods, so all foods are processed. It makes food safe to eat. It also makes nourishing your body really easy during the day. Like, so from an eating disorder standpoint, like processed foods are the first to go. They're the first to become fear foods. They're the first ones that like, when you start to take the steps through recovery, you really have to immerse yourself into like the processed food world. Allow yourself to eat them without shame or guilt. But one thing that really does help your mindset around processed food change is when you do realize that primarily any food that you buy in a grocery store is processed. Almost everything goes through a process. And if you really just, you know, dump, like, I'm sorry, dumb it down to a simple definition of process, it, it can, I can't speak for everyone, but it can help you really, uh, make all foods equal in your eyes because you're like, yeah, this apple that I'm picking up went through a process. It was processed. How else did the little sticker get put on it? Recognizing that yes, all food is processed. The process is not the same for all food, but it does go through a process process it does help your mindset change around food it helps your relationship with food. I don't think that's a bad thing. Nourishing your body really easy during the day. Enjoy that soda, sweetheart, and your osteoporosis when you're older. You don't have to be constantly eating things that are nutritionally dense. Not every meal has to be a perfect balance of nutrients. Not every snack needs to be natural. Every drink does not have to be water, okay? You can consume whatever foods you would like. All foods have a place, it's okay to eat more one day, and if you feel like eating less the next, it's okay. Not every single day has to mimic each other. And not every day needs to mimic what this person consumes. And not every day needs to mimic what that person consumes. Drink the damn soda if you want a damn soda. It's not gonna deter your health journey, your weight loss, weight gain, weight maintenance, weight, weight don't give a fuck journey, okay? One soda is literally not gonna kill you. I had three on Friday. They just kept bringing them to me at the bar. Like, mm -hmm, I couldn't say no. Burgers, you have your bun for a carb. Patty has protein. Maybe you're adding some cheese or avocado. That's some fat. Maybe you're topping with more vegetables. That's not- All right, she doesn't understand anything about food quality. We know that. I'm not expecting these videos to have any any intelligence there. Food quality is not the subject of this video. This person likes to do this where the topic that he is reacting to, he likes to then pull a different topic, some, like just out of the air and like throw it in there trying to make it relevant just so he has something to say because he really doesn't have much to say. Diet culture is the open door to eating disorder development and you need to understand the myths and lies that diet culture 
perpetrates so that you can understand the lies and myths that your eating disorder tells you. And one thing that is huge, and this is like the gateway to orthorexia and major restriction of all foods, is food quality. Yes, as I've said many, many times, there are some foods that are more nutritionally dense than others. I guess in his mind that equates quality and that has nothing to do with this topic. We are trying to separate food quality from food like you just eat eat food uh but yeah the breads the buns no they're not good for you it's only not good for you if all you're eating is hamburger buns that's devoid of nutrition uh yes if you're just eating hamburger buns all day yes if you're only eating bagels all day day if you're just eating loaves of bread yes that would not be a healthy habit or choice having a burger every now and again is okay you're allowed to do that. And yes, she makes a good point. Your major nutrients are accounted for in a burger, you know, depending on what toppings you put on it. I don't see why he has such a passion for deterring people from eating. It's It, it does scare me that people are listening to him because he is the voices that I used to listen to, not him specifically, but he is the voice that encouraged my eating disorder to reaffirm things in my brain that were wrong and made me go down a path of destruction. They're not. They're not. Bagels, buns, they're not good for you. They're not. Bad for you, that's actually a pretty balanced meal. Uh, starchy vegetables, so why are we demonizing vegetables, right? Should we tell her? Should we tell her? Nah, let's let her keep going. Potatoes are delicious, versatile, high in fiber, potassium, vitamin C. That's not bad for you. You have nothing to say? Oh, that's right, because you have nothing to say. Thank you. Uh, sweet tooth, cravings aren't bad. Sometimes we crave fresh food, salty food, or warm food, right? That's not bad, that's normal. There's no points being made here, by the way. You're right, there are no points to be made because you have nothing on your side. Nothing. You can, you can spew your misinformation as much as you want. You're not dunking on anyone. You are simply just saying things that are atrocious, outlandish, for shock value. Simply that. You say things that are simply not true for the sake of saying things that are simply not true. Uh, eating late, so your body's not going to metabolize food differently at 10 p.m. than it would. Yeah, okay, eating late, uh, these are all things that are well known. These are things that are well known to be bad. Bagels, not good for you. Processed foods, not good for you. Burgers, the actual burger, or like some raw cheese. Yeah, the vegetables, a lot of people shouldn't be eating vegetables. Not all vegetables are created equal. Oh my God, not all vegetables are created equal. Well then, sir, write a letter to the scientists who develop our vegetables these days and ask them to make them equal. Not all vegetables are the same because they are different. Thank you for pointing that out. You make a great point. Oh my god. Yes, a potato is different from um, a pea. Yup. But they both have nutrients that our body needs. And both are quite delicious. Um, starches, you want to keep those lower? Like maybe certain ones might be okay for certain people in certain situations. Sweet tooth, uh, eat some fruit done yeah because eating fruit is equivalent to candy or ice cream yup that is not gonna satisfy your craving for ice cream eating a fucking apple okay if you want ice cream have ice cream here's the beautiful thing about cravings once you satisfy it it tends to go away and then you're not binging on a million different things to try and satisfy that thing that sweet tooth when all you could have done in the first place is had a little bowl of ice cream and called it a day it's simple as that uh, eating late at night, not good for you. Why is it not good for you? It's going to negatively affect the quality of your sleep. So let's hear what she's, she doesn't, she doesn't, she's not saying anything. You, neither have you. I mean, she has actually said quite a bit. She has said things that will change people's lives, that will improve people's relationships with food, which in turn improves their quality of life because they start living. When you throw out diet culture myths, when you start to eat your fear foods and learn to eat them without guilt or shame, when you start to learn how to incorporate 
all foods into your diet, your life, your quality of life improves dramatically. That is when you start to live. I don't believe this man lives, okay? I don't believe that because this is what he does. This is his his job essentially is to poke fun, to insult, to hurt people, to spread a message of just disdain. Don't listen to him because he's just angry for no reason. If you're gonna talk about this, you better look like you're actually healthy. You look emaciated. No, she doesn't. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, I'm sorry she's not shirtless so that she you can see that she's clearly not emaciated, sir, just because you don't own a shirt. As someone who was once compared to, and this is, this is just, someone said this to me and I'm not trying to like be insulting or offensive, but as someone who was to my face compared to a Holocaust victim because of my physical appearance, sir, shut the fuck up. And your eyebrows aren't even. Oh, your eyebrows aren't even even. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? Oh, that's right, nothing, because you have nothing to say. The only thing you can do is insult a person's appearance and think because you did that, you've put down their, their intelligence somehow. Congratulations, sir. You're no picnic to look at either. Eating late, so your body's not going to metabolize food differently at 10 p.m. than it would at 10 a.m. Your body doesn't have a time clock. Yes, it it's important that we honor our... Your, your body doesn't... Uh, your body doesn't have a time clock. It fucking does. That's literally probably the most fundamental thing that your body does have. If that was the case, then people who live in different time zones would be metabolizing food differently. 10 p.m. somewhere else is daytime here. So, like, what time zone are we all supposed to be synced up to? Is an internal clock. 10 p.m. than it would at 10 a.m. Your body doesn't have a time clock. It's important that we honor our hunger, right? The ad is make life peachy. Jesus Christ. I, I'm, Go fuck yourself. Let's just keep yeah, someone who's trying to make life better and easier for people. Go fuck yourself. Dude, go fuck yourself. You have nothing to contribute to this conversation. Like this woman made this video for people who clearly struggle with their relationship with food. They struggle with body image. They struggle with just accepting themselves. And this person, this man, can we call him that, has the audacity to say, go fuck yourself. Well, she's trying to better people's lives. You're simply not. You are not. There is no way, shape or form, no reality where what you are doing betters anyone's life. You are sending a message to people to continue to hate themselves. Keep on moving on. Yeah, throwing shade at Yeah, nothing like a little ad hominem attack. Yeah, fuck your eyebrows. Fuck your eyebrows. Fuck your eyebrows. Let's go. So he admits he has nothing pertinent to say. Ooh. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I will go. Do not make videos on TikTok. Ladies. Ladies. I will. I'm pouring some more water. I'm pouring one out for the... Uh, I'm pouring a little out for her eyebrows, too. Ladies, I will tell you. Internet. Internet dietitians. Instagram dietitians. TikTok nutritionists. You let me... You, you listen up and you listen good. When you make a video... Oh, Papa Solio will... I will come after those eyebrows. You can come after mine because I accidentally cut off, like, half of mine the other day. And I am well aware of it. As someone from an eating disorder background who still struggles with hearing messages like this and having to remember, I know <laughs> things now that I didn't know before, it's important to believe facts and truth rather than anger and harmful misinformation. Anyway... That is today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you did not enjoy it, you can give it a thumbs down. That is cool too. I don't mind. If you are not subscribed already, please consider subscribing and be sure to hit the notification bell to stay notified of all future uploads. If you have any comments, questions, video suggestions, anything at all, feel free to leave that in the comment section below. Be sure to go follow me over on Instagram and I will see you next time. Bye!